Dave Campbell's Texas football here in College Station at the Lone Star Clinic. Here with the head coach of the Harlingen Cardinals, Coach Manny Gomez. Coach, it's good to see you as always. Thanks for uh, making the trip up and uh, spending some time with us. Well, I'm glad to meet you and see you, and I'm just disappointed Matt's not here, man. We're all disappointed that Matt's not here. He's the big, you know, he's the celebrity around here. I want to ask you a little bit about 2021. Uh, you know, an 8-4 and four year, uh, a playoff win, things like that. I know the standards there at, at Harlingen are really high, but, but when you take a look back on 2021, you know, what, what, what are, what's your overall takeaway from what you guys did? Well, we, uh, we took some lumps early on. We, uh, we, we tried to kind of run some different schemes offensively. Didn't work out, but we learned the hard way. But it's one of the things that, you know, we adapt to what we have or we adapt to what we don't have in this situation. And, uh, you know, things worked out, things didn't, but it's, it's part of it sometimes, you know. We can't keep doing the same stuff over and over again because if you don't have the product, if you don't have the resources, you got to sometimes go elsewhere. So certain things work for us, certain things didn't. But it's like it's, it's a feast or famine kind of stuff sometimes. Sometimes you have it. It's like a farmer. Sometimes your, your product is great. Sometimes it's not. So you just got to make the best of it. And I think we did with the best that we can. We, we, we could. And, uh, you know, 8-4, and four, it's, it's still something that is uh, – it's not to our standard, but you know what? It's still productive, and uh, we definitely had a lot of because a lot of these kids on the offensive side were young, except the quarterback. He's gone, so we have everybody else coming back offensively. So it should be a, a well-oiled machine. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, that's one of the things about last year that that is, you looked all across your depth charts. A lot of juniors, a couple of sophomores sprinkled in there and stuff like that. Do you feel like as the season went on, you saw those youngsters grow to the point that you're happy with? No, absolutely. That's part of it. You know, you put youngsters in there so they can grow. You know, and it's surprising that you know so much about this. Wow, man, it's amazing what you guys Kind of my job, man. Wow, no, it's awesome, man. No, it's, it's like you're on point. Like, man, it's like you just – anyway, it's, it's amazing. But, but no, it, it's part of it. Anytime you put young kids in there, by no means are you trying to get kids to get exposed. But you want them sometimes to learn and grow. Because I say we're not going to just go, think, think, go through it. We're going to grow through it. And, and part of it is when you put young kids in there, you want them to grow so that way tomorrow, which is the next year, they can be a lot more efficient with it. And uh, it's like anything that we emphasize. We're not just going to go through things. We're going to grow through things. And that's part of what we do when we put young cats in there. Uh, I believe you're coming from that side. Yes. So are you listening to Jimbo Fisher? Yes. All right. Give us a review on Coach Fisher's uh, presentation. Well, first of all, Coach Fisher uh, is a good friend of, uh, of uh, one of my buddies that I play ball here. He was a, a buddy of mine named Hunter Goodwin. From uh, He was with me at a and Kingsville, and he eventually moved to A&M anyway. So uh, had a, I got a chance to kind of talk to Jimbo on a, on a side note, which I won't bring to ask, I, ask what he basically what he, how he responded. But, no, he's a, a genuine guy. And the way I say he's genuine is because – He's an old school guy, you know, and I'm like part of that mix where I'm like I'm in between the old school mentality and the, uh, the I guess you could say the. And you're young. You're saying you're young. Yeah, I'm 50 years young. I'm 50 years young. So you know the millennial mentality and the entitlement stuff. You know, it's like, but you know he he means well and he's a, he's got a lot of character about himself. He's got a great personality. That's what I love about Coach Fit, Coach Jimbo because he's 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 got some jokes, man. And besides being stern. You know, he knows how to go in there and say a few jokes and keep it real, man. That's the whole thing. Keep it 100. That's what we try to do because we try to always adapt to what we have but don't have. And, and Jimbo is like that all the time, 24-7. You know, I've been around him, watch a lot of his podcasts, watch a lot of his interviews, and I learn from those guys. That's what I like to do as a head coach. I like to see what coaches say before, before the game, after the games and stuff, and just, just to learn from that because it's important because sometimes it gets twisted. You know, you're so emotional after a game, and some of these guys, you know, it's about doing the right thing at the wrong time, you know? And these guys are always productive at the wrong time. And that's what I like about Coach Fisher, and that's why I'm here. All right, so we're a week, we're a week removed from realignment uh, down there in the Valley. Not a, you know, 6 8 level, not a ton of changes down there, but, but overall, you know, I know that you guys were able to have your get-together. wasn't, you know, there were weather prevented them. Uh, overall, you take a look at the, the new landscape you're walking into. What do you think? Uh, well, it's like uh, people down there, you guys, I say, you know, the UIO is going to do what they need to do. So I don't lose... I guess I lose my hair over it because I ain't got none. But, uh, you know, I just, you know, we adapt to and, and overcome. It's like we ask our kids. We've got to learn to adapt and overcome. So whatever presents itself, we, we decide to fix it at that, at that time. But, you know, we knew we, had, we, had to, we were probably going to go into that 16 district. So I already had re figured out a, 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 a week five game because I didn't want to have to drive back to Midland. But uh, so we were able to keep it local. But, of course, the uh, – the San Antonio schools were running away from the Austin schools, and they're trying to come pick fights on us. But I was fortunate enough to have some guys down there that wanted to play us. Don't get me wrong. I've done it. I've gone to San Antonio schools. I've done the traveling. And after a while, as you get older also, 
it, that jet lag, man, I'll tell you what, they used to maybe last a day, now it's like three days. So, you know, it makes the weekend long and it makes that, like I said, jet lag takes a while to get out of the system. But, you know, we're fortunate that there's a lot of guys down there that are respecting what we're doing in Harlingen and they're giving us an opportunity to, to, to bang and, and, get, and get a game in and stuff and enjoy it. All right, and finally, the Dave Campbell's Tech Football crew, there's a rumor that we're going to try to come down for the Battle of the Arroyo, of course, the big game, Harlingen San Benito. Uh, for, for those who are unaware, perhaps, of what goes down the Battle of the Arroyo, give us a, give us a quick preview of what, what, what to expect. Well, first of all, the perception of the Valley, you know, it's a beautiful place, actually. It's a lot of, there's a lot of great people. Don't get me wrong, the closer you get to the border, you know, it's like you want trouble, go look for it, you'll find it if you get closer to the border. But in Harlingen, it's, 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 it's an awesome place. We have a great food, we have great chemistry, we have a lot of dynamics. And anyway, but as far as when it comes to that game, you know, uh, Dan Gomez, he's a, he's a great coach. He's a, he, he does great things down there. And uh, basically one word is violence, you know. And to me in football, being a defensive-minded guy, I love those type of games because, you know what, it's one of those like, ooh, man, you know, kind of stuff. I, you know, I'm a big, biggest fan when I, I'm on stand on the sideline, but, you know, it's just it's fun to see stuff like that. But, you know, that's how we train. That's how we prepare our kids. You know, we don't know any better. Just go hard and, and enjoy life and, and enjoy what you do. And that's what, that's what happens out there. The product that presents itself is eventually based on what we emphasize in the offseason. And uh, it's like I said, know what time it is and uh, code of conduct, know what time it is and, and apply it. And when it's go time, it's go time. And, and, and those games are a lot of fun. So. so you're saying if we do come down, we will be entertained? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I might have to turn around and look at it and be like Russell Crowe. Are you not entertained? <laughs> you know, kind of stuff. But, and, if, and if we don't entertain you, you know, we'll, we'll find something maybe afterwards, you know, we can talk about it. I work, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.